6.3 deals with the math of repayment. We've talked about loans and how they're structured. We've talked about loan types and what are the differences between the different types of loans. What we haven't actually done yet and what we're about to do now for the first time is really get under the hood of repaying these loans and look at the actual numbers that are going to be involved in repaying these loans. Loans have a very easy to decipher pattern about them with repayment. It, they look complex, but they're really not all that complex. We learned earlier today that when we make a monthly payment, it contains two components. What are those two components that that monthly payment contains? Principal and interest. Principal and interest. Some amount of that payment is going toward interest and whatever's left over of that payment is going toward what? Principal. 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 Month after month after month. Now, interest, we said, is the charge for using somebody else's money. We know that. A phrase or a word that we're not familiar with yet as much is the phrase debt service. Now, we've heard it. We've talked about it. But that's the fancy name for that monthly payment. And notice I keep saying the payments are made how often? Monthly. Monthly. The fancy way we know of debt service or payments made monthly is called debt service. You are servicing that debt. What do you have to do to service that debt? You have to make a what every month? Payment. payment. Monthly payment. And that payment is going to stay exactly the what in the vast majority of loans? Same. The same. Month after month after month. Which is interesting because the interest that's being paid month after month after month is not going to stay the same. Even if the interest rate stays the same, the dollar interest is going to be different month after month. Why is that? Why is the dollar amount of interest going to be different from one month to the next? Because your loan balance is going down. Because your loan balance is going down. Because your loan balance has gone down, so therefore you're paying interest on a lower loan amount. Fair enough? Okay. One word that you need to start to familiarize yourself with, because interest builds up daily, is the name for interest that has built up daily. That is called accrued interest. It's right here on the slide. Accrued interest. I want you all to do something for me. Try to think how I want to say this. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to envision a page in a calendar. Everybody got that vision in your head? Mm -hmm. And now I want you to envision turning the page in that calendar. It doesn't matter if you turn it backwards or you turn it forward. You can go to the month before or the month after. Everybody got that in your mind? Mm -hmm. And now I want you to envision yourself stabbing yourself in both eyeballs because you just did what you never do with a loan. Jesus. You never turn the page. Whenever we are dealing with interest, we always stay in that month. Always. In under, numbers and letters. Under no circumstance are you allowed to go back into the what? Next month. The previous month or forward into the what? Next month. Next, Next month. month. If you go backwards, you go back to what day of the current month? First. The first. The first. If you go forwards, you're allowed to go how far forward? To what day of the current month? The last, the last day. The last day. That's it. No farther back, no further forward. So if I'm dealing with interest for the month of September, how far back am I allowed to look? September 1st. The 1st. September 1st. How far forward am I allowed to look? September 31st. September 30th. September 30th, correct? 30th, yeah. September 30th. By the way, let's have a conversation about that. How many days are in the month of September? 30. 30. 30. 30. That is true. How many days are in the month of April? 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. That is true. 
How many days are in the month of October? 31. That is not true. 30. How many days are in the month of February? 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Um, because from now on, in this class, every month has how many days, folks? 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 days. That is called a banker's calendar. Mm -hmm. On a banker's calendar, we treat every month exactly the same. You've actually been doing this your whole life. You just never thought about it. When you make a car payment, do you pay more in January than you pay in February? No. no. Well, why not? Because they both have what? Rigged. 30 days. They both have 30 days. Mm -hmm. When you pay rent, do you pay more rent in December than you pay in November? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Because for financial purposes, they both have what? 30 days. 30 days. 30 days. So the good news is you can let it go. It's 30 days, right? So yep. when we look at interest, stay within that month. You're going to be tempted when we talk about accrued interest. And accrued interest is interest that's built up. You're going to be tempted to go all the way back to the beginning of the year, back to when the loan was originated. No. How far back in time would you go for accrued interest, folks? First of the month. First of the month. First of the month. First of the month. That's it. So, pop quiz. How many days of accrued interest does every mortgage loan in the United States of America have currently? Every single one. 30 days. 30. 30 days. No. How many days of accrued interest do they all 14. have right now? 14. 14. 14 days. I'm screaming, Misha. And that's what I'm saying. You don't get it. You think you're hearing me, but you're not hearing me. Accrued interest is going back in time. Do we all agree on that? Yes. How far back in time did I say you were allowed to go? First to the beginning, beginning of the month. month. The first of the current month, correct? How many yeah, days correct. ago is that, folks? 14, 14 days 14. ago. That's 14 days ago. Okay, okay. So every mortgage note in the country right now has how many days of accrued interest on it? Right now. 14. 14, 14, 14 days. And tomorrow, every mortgage note in existence in the country will have... 15. 15. 15 days. So whenever you're asked for accrued interest, it is not hard. Look at the date. That's how many days of accrued interest they have. If it is February the 24th, how many days of accrued interest does that note have? 24. 24. It doesn't matter what month it's in. And here's why that's true. Isn't a payment being made every single month on that thing, folks? Yes. Yes. Right? So when the payment gets made, all of the interest that was accrued up to that point gets paid off. So right now, we're accruing interest every single day. Every day, interest is building up or accruing. How many days of accrual are there? 30. 30. 30 days. And then magically, November 1st rolls around. Or excuse me, October 1st rolls around. And what happens on October 1st? Starts over. Why does it reset, though? Because it's October the glass 1st is empty. Days. But why does it reset on October 1st? Because it's been so long. We paid it. Payment is getting made. Mm -hmm. Is a payment not coming on October 1st, folks? Yes. yes, sir. And when that payment comes, how much of that daily accrued interest from September is going to get paid off? All, all of it. it. All of it. Which resets the accrued interest to how many days? That one. Zero, one. Or, zero. Zero or one, if you want to look at the first. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. And we start the whole process over again. One, two, three, four, five, until we get to 30, and then what happens again magically? We're going to pour the glass down the lender's throat. We make another, we make another payment and pay it down to zero, and then it starts accruing again. So here's the other thing. Will you ever be dealing with more than 30 days worth of interest ever when you're talking about these notes? No. 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 Because we're always staying within the same what? 30 days. Months. Within that same month, right? Within that same 30-day 30 30 period. So accrued interest just means how far into the current 30-day period are we? Loans 
are mostly what we call amortized. Amortized is just the really fancy way of saying making small payments over a long period of time, tackling yeah, a, was, a big debt with small payments. Travis, do, 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 do you remember who it was? She said, okay, just so I can make sure I got it. This is basically taking a big ass number and spreading it out over time. Was it Holly? <laughs> I don't remember, but that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Amortization is taking a big ass number and spreading payments no, out I, on it over a very what? Long ass time. time. A long period of time. So I pull up to my kid's Christian Academy and you and I have it on the mm -hmm. car. <laughs> I just said ass, ass, and head. Oh, I'm so sorry. Up, you know, try to turn it down. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It was too funny. funny. Too funny. We give them a whole nother type of education. Um, so we have a big balance here. This is your principal balance. We do not amortize the interest, folks. The interest is paid off every single month. What are we amortizing about this? What's being amortized? The principal. The principal is the loan amount. The principal is being amortized because that's what's being repaid over a very long period of time. That's what's going to get eliminated with those regular equal payments that come month after month after month. Everybody good with that statement? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we keep making those payments month after month, every month, every month, the amount of, so let's say the payment is $1,600. Mm -hmm. And we know that's getting broken into interest and principal. Right. Every month, the amount of that $1,600 going toward interest is going in what direction? Down. Interest first and then principal. I know the interest right. is coming out first, but how? But as far as amounts, the amount of the $1,600 that's, that's being paid toward interest is going which direction every month? Down. 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 Less. Down. Going down. Less and less yeah. and less of that $1,600 is being eaten up by interest at every month. Does that, does that statement make sense for everybody? Yes. Yeah. Therefore, more and more and more of that sixteen hundred dollars is being credited toward what every single month? The principal. principal. The principal. Folks, this is another reason you cannot take one month. When somebody asks you, well, how much am I going to pay off in six months? Can you take what they paid off this month and multiply it times six? No. No, no. no because that number changes every what? Every month. Every month. Every month is its own unique thing in these loans. That's also why you never go outside of the same month when you're dealing with it. Right. They're going to ask you something like that. And I tried doing it the way Travis just explained it, and they had an answer choice. They will have an answer choice that equates with, you know, taking six, you know, taking what we pay off this month and multiplying it times six. It's not going to work because that number changes every month. Okay, it's a different number every month. Now, now that we know that amortize, remind me again what amortize means before we go into these terms right here. Remind me what amortize means. Principal being spread out over a long period of time. Principal being spread out over a long period of time. Principal being paid over a long period of time. Everybody agree with that statement? Yes. Okay. So, principal being paid over a long period of time is what we mean by amortization. Loans can be partially paid off over a long period of time or fully paid off over a long period of time. I'm really helping you a lot here. What do you think fully amortized means, folks? It will be all paid at the end. What do you think fully amortized means? That you pay off the fully paid off. Balance. Fully paid off. The entire balance paid off over a long period of time. In other words, if you make every single payment you're scheduled to make, what is your loan balance going to be at the end? Zero. 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 If that borrower makes every single payment as scheduled, then they after they make their last equal monthly payment, their balance will be zero on a fully amortized loan. Everybody with me on that? Yes. That is not true in a partially amortized loan. In a partially amortized loan, if you make every single payment that you're scheduled to make, you will still have a remaining balance after your last payment. Now, do you think the lender's going to forgive that balance? No. What do y'all think? No. no. 
They're just not going to let you continue to make what on it? Payments. Payments. Monthly. Payments. Payments. Monthly. How do they want it? All, right. All, right. All, right. All in one payment. Guess what we call that one payment that's at the end of a partially balloon. amortized loan? That is called a balloon payment. So fully amortized loans do not have balloon payments. The reason a fully amortized loan doesn't have a balloon payment is because it is scheduled such that your regular payments take care of the entire debt. It is scheduled such that when you make your last regularly scheduled payment, your balance is what on a fully amortized loan? Zero. Zero. So there's nothing to pay as a balloon payment. But partially amortized loans, your payments are scheduled in such a way that even making all of them is not enough. We know that going in. When somebody has a partially amortized loan, I, I want you to understand that. This is not something that everybody's like, holy shit, we're not going to pay the loan off. This is something that was planned. This is something that when they took the loan out and they said, okay, if you take this partially amortized loan, your payments are not going to cover paying off the loan. When you get to the end, the last payment, you're still going to have a balance, which means you're going to have to do what, folks? Make a balloon payment. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where I have to ask you a question that makes you sort of reflect. And I'm going to caution you not to interject your own personal opinions into this. Because what I find with this is people can understand these concepts, but they get so caught up in the who the fuck would do that that they can't <laughs> see past it. 100%. <laughs> I want that you to mean. accept for just a minute that there are borrowers who don't care about that balloon payment. They simply don't care because it's so far down the road, they're not paying attention to it. They ain't ever going to pay it off. What would prompt someone? What would prompt someone to choose a partially amortized loan over a fully amortized loan? Y'all keep, so yeah. keep talking about, y'all keep talking in the sky. Well, I want to know viscerally pay. from a money standpoint, what would incentivize somebody to take a partially oh, amortized loan? They was It's got lower monthly, monthly payments. payments. <laughs> It's if it's got, partially amortized, you're partially paying Here's the, the thing. Why do you think you have a balance at the end? Because your payments were too damn what all along? Oh, small. Yeah. They were too small all along. This is some. This is a lender allowing a borrower to do what? Pay what? Less. 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 Now, I'm going to throw it back to you. Because a lot of you were that one sitting out there going, who would do that? Now, let me ask it this way. Some of you got a friend out there somewhere who all they care about in their life is a monthly payment. They don't care about how much they'll actually pay. They don't care about if they'll ever pay it off. Hell, they don't even know what they paid for it. They couldn't even tell you what the price of it is. Tell me you don't have that friend who buys a car like that. Tell me you don't have a friend who don't know what they paid for the car, don't know how much they're going to pay for the car, don't know when or if they will ever pay the car off. The only thing they can tell you about that car is what? That they pay a monthly payment. Monthly payment. <laughs> and which loan did they choose? The one with the what? No payments. The lowest monthly payment. Folks. Can you buy a home in the same way? Yes, you yes. can. Yeah. Yes, you can take out a loan that focuses on minimizing your monthly payments. Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, is there going to be a trade-off for that? If the only focus is lowest possible monthly payments, what's going to be the ugly trade-off that comes at the end of that loan? Balloon payment. Balloon payment. Balloon payment. Balloon payment. Yeah. Balloon payment. If you don't want to make the balloon payment, you better be willing to suck it up and pay higher monthly payments. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, so Deanna, you asked a question that um, 
Never. Okay. So the collateral document, remember, it will never say anything about the money. Right. So the question never. was, so will this show up on it on the note or deed of trust? Well, it will show up on one of them. This deals with repayment. Which one, do, which document do you think this would show up in folks? The note. Oh, no. Show up in the note. It doesn't show up in the deed of trust because the deed of trust doesn't mention anything about repaying the money, but it will certainly show up in the note because here's what that note's going to say. The date of your last payment is this. Your balance as of that date will be blah, 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 and you will be expected to pay it in one lump sum payment. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you're looking at what kind of a note. Balloon. Partially amortized Partially with a balloon Partially payment. With, yes. Travis, I, come, I buy houses and like we move every three years in the triangle. I just love to, and I've never been offered this. Is this something that like is rare? Or well, it is for? rare. It is rare. It is absolutely rare. Um, but here's the thing. I've never really been offered a lot of that stuff about cars, but I know it's out there because I've heard people talk about it. I mean, I hear people talk about like, oh, I'm paying blah, blah, blah per month. I'm like, how is that possible? I don't even understand how you could ever pay it off. And then I come to realize they can't. They literally can't. They're mm -hmm. paying so slowly that the car's depreciating faster than they're making payments. Yep. Right, but that loan exists doesn't mean it's common. This loan exists now. We'll tell you who does this loan a lot. Let's get away from residential real estate for a second. Mm -hmm. Commercial, if you own commercial real estate, mm -hmm. is your goal paying the commercial real estate off, or is your goal make as much money off of rent and tenants as you can make right now? Making money, rent and tenants. Making money. make as much money as you can right now. What's the number one way to make as much money as you can right now? Minimize your what. Your, your expenses and what's one of the biggest expenses the monthly monthly, monthly payment. payment so somebody who owns a shopping center they might do a partially amortized note because all they want to make sure is they're collecting more rent every month than they're paying out in expenses right mm -hmm. and i've had people say but what's going to happen when 20 years from now that balloon payment comes due and they can't pay it they're going to borrow it again they're going to borrow it again, folks. Or wouldn't you just sell it before the balloon? Is or you open? can sell it if you want to. But if you want to keep it, can you just refinance it? Refinance it, yeah. Finance it, yep. mm -hmm. And do another partially amortized loan. They may never pay it off. And people say, well, that's stupid. Why would you want to own it? Remember, they're making money when? Now. 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 Yeah. Every single month. That's why they want to own it. And large amounts of it. At right. And so don't get so caught up in the why would somebody do this that you can't understand it for what it is. It's simply a way of lowering the monthly payment. That's what a partially amortized loan is. How do we all feel about that statement now? Mm -hmm. Good. And it is scheduling the payments to be lower. Now, one of the things that we have to look about and, and I want to point out to you as we start to go through this. We are really just focusing on that monthly payment, the monthly amount that's being paid every single month. And how do we come up with that amount? How do we create that amount? Where does that amount come from? One of the biggest things that can impact that payment is whether or not the interest rate stays the same over the life of the loan. If the interest rate stays the same, we say we have a fixed rate level payment loan. What does that mean? Every payment's going to be exactly the what? The same. Exactly the same. So could we combine that and say we have a fixed rate level payment fully amortized loan? Could we combine, could we lay the fully amortized part on top of that? Yes. 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 So what do we now know about that loan based on that, the, all those names? We know the payment is the same what? Each month. month. Every month. And we know the balance after we make all the payments is what? Zero. Zero. Full. There you go. Fixed rate, fully amortized. Same payment every month. Last payment gets made. Balance is what? Zero. 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 The name tells you how the loan is structured. Everybody okay with that? Okay. And what happens there is the constant payment leads to more and more principal being paid off. Loan is completely paid off with the last statement. Now we know 
that's not going to be every loan. If they choose to go fixed rate partially amortized, well, that means the payments are all going to be the what? The same. same. The same, but at the end of the loan, you're going to have what? A large a payment. A balloon payment, that one big outstanding lump sum payment because your payments weren't big enough. What if I told you there was a way to take the payment even lower potentially than doing a partially amortized loan? Surely not, right? Yes. From here. What could be worse than having a big balloon payment at the end? What what could be worse than that? Paying all the principal. Having an even bigger balloon payment at the end. What if there were loans out there where you could make payments for 15, 20, 30 years and never pay one penny toward the outstanding principal owed on that loan? What if there were loans out there where the lo at the end of the loan, your balloon payment was the full original principal amount that you borrowed all due in one lump sum payment? That'd be kind of crazy, wouldn't it? Here's my question. Line of credit, maybe? No. What are the two components to most monthly payments, folks? Interest and interest. Interest and principal. Take one of them out. Principal. The principal out, and they're paying what every month? Interest only. Interest only only mm -hmm. and if they're paying interest only what's happening to the principal balance of the loan it stays the same, same. It's just same. Same. stays the same you make 20 years worth of payments what's the balance same, same as what you started same as what you started with what's the advantage of that to the borrower low monthly Low payments. payments. Very lower very monthly good. payments this is an even lower monthly payment than the partially amortized note is. Now, when it comes to homes, what are most people going to do? Fully amortized, partially amortized, or interest only? Fully amortized. Fully amortized. Fully amortized. But these are all possible. Mm -hmm. even, if you're in the home, even if you're in the home only for a couple of years, do, does everyone normally do you suggest the fully amortized? Most people do fully amortized just because um, it's by far the most common with home loans. Um, but yeah, there are people. Now, I will tell you who I've had do interest only loans. What if I have somebody like a cardiac surgeon, but they're still doing their residency? What does a cardiac surgeon make? Not not a resident, but what does a cardiac surgeon make once they're out in the real world? A lot. Of a lot. A lot. A million dollars a year? Wow. Yeah. $500,000 a year, a million dollars a year, something like that? What do they make with what do they make that two years there is they're in residency? Not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. What if they want to go ahead and buy the nice house? What if they want to get their kids in the nice school district while they're just doing their residency? Wouldn't it be smart to get them in a payment that's as low as possible for those two years? Yes. What y'all think? Yes. Yes. And then in a couple of years, can they refinance into the fully amortized when they can now afford a much higher payment? Mm -hmm. Yes. There you go. There's one creative way to do it. So all these different loan types just give people different options, folks. That's all they do. That's the, that's the whole point, is giving people different options. One major change, though. What if we go to an adjustable rate note? Now, keep in mind, it can be adjustable rate fully amortized. It can be adjustable rate partially amortized. It can be adjustable rate interest only. The, the, the amortization part of it is a different question. But so far, we've talked about all these loans as being fixed rate, fully mm -hmm. amortized, fixed rate, partially amortized, fixed rate, interest mm -hmm. only. What changes when we say, you know what? It's not your fixed parents. rate anymore. Oh, it's adjustable rate. Mm -hmm. Your payments, they've changed. Mm -hmm. The payments change. The payments are no longer steady. They fluctuate. 
Because every time the interest rate changes, guess what's got to change with it? The payment. The payment. The payment. And it can change dramatically, folks. It can change dramatically. I, I want to I just throw a number out there to you all. Because it doesn't sound like a major change. Let's, we'll stick with that same $500,000 loan. We'll stick with that same $500,000 loan. If we're borrowing $500,000 a year, or $500,000 total, excuse me, and our interest rate is adjustable, and it adjusts up by 2%. People hear that, and they're like, oh, 2%, it's a lot, but it ain't that much. Oh, is it not that much? Mm -mm, it is. That's $10,000. Mm -hmm. Per year, folks. You divide that by 12, you get what their monthly payment goes up. Does a 2% interest rate change make a difference when it's $833 a month more in interest on that same note just because the rate changed? Yes. Yeah. That's the risk of an adjustable rate note. The risk is that the payment can escalate dramatically, very quickly, with fluctuations in the interest rate. So, why do you think people do them? Knowing that they're taking this risk that it could go up and change their payment so dramatically, what is it that incentivizes? Why don't the people just do fixed rate note? What is it that incentivizes these people to do an adjustable rate note, you think? Because it may go down. Well, they might go down, but here's the thing: if they go down, you could refinance too. They got a that's not really. In the beginning. That's not really why people do them. Why do people do them? Why do they take this gamble? Have a low interest rate. rate that, it starts with. that first one in the beginning is enticing. What do you think they offer in the beginning to get you to agree to an adjustable rate? They offer you a ridiculously low interest rate to get you in the door. Nope. They offer you one that is significantly lower than what you could get as a fixed rate. And you're like, whoa, you mean I could get myself a 2% interest rate? Yes. Couldn't you just refinance when it went high? Well, Janet said, couldn't you refinance when it adjusts? Maybe. That's the hope. Mm -hmm. But what if your but property drops in value guarantee. by the time it's time to refinance? Because that could happen. Right. Well, that's exactly now. that's exactly what pinched about 20 million Americans in 2007 and 2008. They were all sitting there in adjustable rate loans, and they were given all these fantastic teaser rates. Let me tell you what one of the most popular loans out there was. At that, at that point in time, a bank called Wachovia. How many of you ever heard of Wachovia? Oh, yeah. Wachovia had a loan called the Pick a Payment Loan. That was literally the name of the loan, pick a payment. The introductory interest rate on the pick a payment loan was 2%. Good. <laughs> and it was for one year. The idea here was I'm going to get the 2% and at the end of the year when it adjusts, I'm just going to do what? Refinance. I'm going to refinance. You know, I'll take my lumps, I'll take my, I'll take my, I'll take my lumps and I'll get a four and a half percent rate or whatever the rates are at that point in time. But for this year, I'm going to save some cash. You think everybody went into it thinking that? Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing though. Refinancing requires a new appraisal, does it not? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. next loan is going to be based on whether or not this thing appraises again. And so that's fine as long as property values are going up. What happened in 2007 and 2008 to property values? Down. They went down. They went down. So let's just say somebody took out one of these loans in 2006 or so, and they borrowed $400,000 on that property with that 2% intro rate. And they get the letter in the mail at the end of the year. They're current. They're making their payment. They get the letter in the mail at the end of the year. It's time for your interest rate to adjust. Your interest rate is going to 7.9%. Okay. 
So if we do the math, $400,000 times 5.9, because that's how much we're going up. Divided by 12. Our payment just went up, folks, a smooth $1,996 a month more. Oh. Do you think many borrowers could afford that kind of an increase in the payment? No. 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 So they said, okay, but well, I'm not going to do that anyway. I'm going to just do what? I'm going to refinance. I'm going to refinance. So they go back to the lender and say, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm going to refinance into a fixed rate. And the lender's like, great. Great. Let us get an appraisal on your house. What was happening to property values in 2007-2008, folks? Went down. Oh, yeah. Going down. They dropped precipitously. Yes. And in some areas, that house in that year Oof. went from $400,000 to $275,000 on that appraisal. Good Lord. So here's what the lender would tell you. We'll be happy to refinance you, but we can only lend you what? Two hundred and seventy-five. So we'll be glad to refinance you as long as you can write us a check for the hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars that you owe. Wow. So here are your options: either have your payment go up by nineteen hundred and ninety-six dollars a month, or refinance and come up with one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in cash to do so. Wow, that's what happened. The setup. How about option C: foreclose? And yep. that became the only option available for millions and millions and millions of people, folks. That is the danger of the adjustable rate note. And that is the danger of doing it thinking, I know for sure I'm going to refinance. Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, that does not mean they're automatically awful. There are plenty of adjustable rate loans that are actually a really good idea. For example, State Employees Credit Union has one. It's a five-year lock period if you've got a buyer who's going to buy a house and you know they're only going to be in there three or four years that's a no-brainer because they're never going to be there long enough to do what pay the loan off no adjust, adjust. Have the rate adjust oh, yeah. they're going to keep the introductory rate the whole time so it can be a good idea you just got to know how it works and you got to make sure your clients know how it works when they get that adjustable rate loan. One of the things to understand about ARMS or adjustable rate loans is the, the terminology of a one-year ARM, a two-year ARM, a three-year ARM. That does not mean the loan is for one year or two years. That's the lock period. When we say somebody has a two-year ARM, that means they're going to keep that teaser rate for two years. And then the rate can change every two years after that. Uh, Christina. Um, yes. So with the rate itself, um, the adjustable rate, um, if there's like a, how do I say, like a limit, like, oh, okay, 6% is- We're actually going to talk about that in just a second. Yes, there are. Steven, you had your hand up? Yeah, I was going to say that I uh, did an arm uh, several decades ago, and it worked out great for me because there is a limit that could go up, or in a limit it could change per year. Mm -hmm. Right. Even at its limit, it was- just a small amount more than what it was at that point and it started so much lower and i was in that house like free and it was it worked out great for me there you go so this is a perfect segue to the next slide where would you find the information about how much the rate can adjust any limits on the rate adjusting where would you find that information your note in the note, in the note. Yep. In their note, their note is going to specify this is an adjustable and their note's going to specify how often the rate's going to change and the note's going to specify what are the caps on the changes. Now, in that particular loan I was talking about that Wachovia had, there were no caps. Mm -hmm. It could have literally adjusted any amount. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's a crazy risk, right? Mm -hmm. But... As Steven's talking about, what if I have one where the maximum adjustment is 1%? That might be a risk worth taking, is it not? Mm -hmm. No. So it's really important to look at the fine print when it comes to adjustable rate loans um, because they will have 
interest rate caps and payment caps built into them that, that help control those adjustments. Last point, and then I will be done with you for the day, um, is when we look at notes, some people have more than one note. Some people have more than one outstanding mortgage loan on their property. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you remember from Wednesday, I'm sorry, Monday, if you remember from Monday, we talked about how when there are multiple liens on the property, you kind of have this pecking order of the order in which the liens are paid. Does everybody remember that discussion? Yes. What did we say was paid first yes. in that pecking order when a property is sold? The oldest mortgage. Mm -hmm. Everything oldest to cover the sale. And, uh, the cost the of the sale first, right? So like foreclosure sale, trustees fees. Remember, you go back and look at that priority list, right? Mm -hmm. What's second on that list? Property taxes. taxes. Ta property taxes, taxes that are owed on the property. Then you get to the mortgages. And within that group of mortgages, we give priority to certain mortgages over the other. How do we give priority to certain mortgages over the other? We got it first. Oldest first. The oldest first. That's exactly right. Oldest first. It's like King Charles. Oldest first. You know? Common sense. It's based on who was there first. And that's what we mean when we say mortgage priority. So when actually when we say first mortgage and second mortgage, I think a lot of people have in their mind, we mean, oh, the bigger one is the first mortgage. Is that necessarily <laughs> true? No. No, the amounts don't matter. The oldest one is the first mortgage. Other ones are called second loan or junior lien. Sometimes we use senior and junior. Think about senior and junior. Senior means you're older, right? right. Junior means you're younger. It just means you're going to get paid in that order. Okay. And that's going to be our stopping point for today. I'm